Welcome to Electra Online and here to get a better understanding of some of the basic orbital parameters we're going to talk about four of the major ones. So we have the inclination of the orbit to the ecliptic, we have the inclination of the equator to the orbit, we have eccentricity, and we have semi-major axis which is also known as the average distance between the planet and the sun. So what are these things? So first of all the inclination of the orbit to the ecliptic. The ecliptic is the imaginary plane that is formed by the Earth's orbit. The Earth going around the Sun every 365 and a quarter days or so makes a plane, a, an imaginary plane, and so we call that the ecliptic of the solar system. That's pretty well where most of the planets can be found, but it turns out that all of the planets are either slightly above or slightly below that ecliptic during some part of their orbit, except for maybe two points in their orbit where they're exactly in the ecliptic. You can see here that Mercury as it goes around the Sun, the plane that Mercury makes as it goes around the Sun makes an angle of 7 degrees with the plane that the Earth makes when it goes around the Sun. And since everything is based upon the orbit of the Earth, so this is called the ecliptic, let me write that down, this is called the ecliptic plane, you can see that the orbit of Mercury then makes a 7 degree angle with the ecliptic plane, therefore it's not exactly on the ecliptic plane, it's a little bit off of that. And so we compare every planet's orbit and every asteroid's orbit and every comet's orbit to that ecliptic plane to get a feel of how it orbits around the Sun. Then we have what we call the inclination of the equator to the orbit. This is also known as the planetary tilt. And so what happens is that most of the planets, I guess, just about all of them, yeah, their axis about which they rotate is not exactly perpendicular to the orbital plane. In the case of the Earth, since the Earth orbits around the ecliptic, you can see that the Earth's tilt, the actual tilt about which the Earth rotates, makes an angle of about 23 and a half degrees relative to the vertical, well, that's, you know, the vertical to the ecliptic plane. Now, of course, for every planet, their, orb their orbital tilt or their rotational tilt is compared to the actual orbit. So Mercury's tilt is relative to the orbit of Mercury, not to the orbit of the Earth. So the tilt of the planet is relative to the planet's orbital plane, not to the Earth's orbital plane. Then we have what we call eccentricity. You know, we, we learned through Kepler that the planets have elliptical orbits rather than circular orbits. And so the amount of, the amount of that eccentricity the more elliptical it is, and that's not a really good way of, of putting it, but maybe the closer it is to the circular orbit, the smaller the ellipticity. The more it's elongated into an elliptical orbit, the greater the uh, eccentricity. So for a perfect circular orbit, the eccentricity is zero, which means that the distance from the planet to the sun is always the exact same distance, and then the eccentricity would be zero. There's no ellipticity to the orbit at all. It's a perfect circle. None of the planets do that. All the planets have elliptical orbits, and so they have some amount of eccentricity. The greater the number, the more elongated the orbit is. And the way we calculate the eccentricity is by taking the largest distance from the planet to the sun, and in this case that's called the aphelion, and we subtract from that the shortest distance during its orbit, that's called the perihelion, so we, we subtract the distance, the radius, to the aphelion, uh, minus the radius of the perihelion, we take that difference and we divide that by the sum of the two numbers. That gives us the eccentricity, and so by knowing what that number is, we have an idea of what the shape of the orbit is for each of the planets. Uh, notice that if you add up the two distances, the distance to the perihelion and distance to the aphelion, you have what we call the semi-major axis. That's the total distance across this ellipse from the one end to the other end where it's most elongated, that's called the semi-major axis, and half that distance is the average distance to the sun from the planet. So if you want to know how far a planet is on average from the sun, you take the longest distance, the aphelion, and then you add that to the perihelion distance, and you divide it by two, that gives you the average distance to the sun, which is usually denoted by the small letter A. A is usually used in astronomy to denote the average distance between the planet and the sun, and that's how it's calculated. It's, it's the semi-major axis. Semi means half the major axis. So this is the major axis. Take half of that. That's the semi-major axis, which is then the average distance from the planet to the sun. So those are some of the more major ways of looking at the orbits and the tilt and orientation of the planets. And so hopefully that gives you a better understanding so when we start comparing the planets to one another, you have an idea of what we're talking about in that respect. And that's how we do that.